Eisner Amper and uh, is, uh, running, runs a nonprofit services group. Uh, and so David's specialty is uh, right, in your, uh, right in your wheelhouse as a not-for-profit. Dave's got over 35 years of experience uh, in this space and has a number of uh, some of the larger not-for-profits in this area where he does uh, accounting work. But, but really, I, th I think, honestly, more than that, and, and the reason that, that David is so successful is that I think uh, his clients see him uh, truly as a partner. And, and his ability to, to demonstrate not only the accounting expertise, but the business savvy that comes with helping people negotiate um, all of the very confusing issues that come with uh, accounting. At least it does for me, Dave. It's, it's, it's confusing. Um, uh, makes, him, makes him special. So we're real pleased to have uh, to Dave join us. It's all yours. Hi, Kevin. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I think I have about 20 minutes to make, to make everybody in the room much more knowledgeable about cash flow and tre the treasury functions in your uh, organizations. And obviously, 20 minutes is not going to be sufficient to uh, really do a much in-depth uh, study of cash flow. But what we're going to go over this morning is really some, just some basic ideas, basic thoughts about cash flow and and how organizations, how you as, as ma leaders and managers of nonprofit organizations can, can focus on the, the treasury function of cash flow and how, how the organization, how your organization can improve your bottom line and your relationships with your financial institutions by, and your vendors by thinking about cash flow and how, you know, how, how, you, how you measure it how you collect it, and how you disperse it. So with that thought in mind, we're going to cover why cash is so important. I mean, cash is king um, in, in all organizations. And nonprofits are, are not any different than other organizations. Cash is very, very important. Without cash, you, you have nothing. You, you know, who's, going to, who's going to work for free? So the movement of cash in and out of an organization or or a program is very important. So you have to be able to measure the, uh, the, f the flow of cash in an organization. Uh, the amount of uh, cash receipts, less disbursements, is your cash flow. And that's, and that's really what an organization needs to understand. They need to understand what is their cash flow. It's a measurement of uh, the organization's um, health, uh, the value of free cash flow in, in, a, in a business is, is critical to enable the organization to accomplish a certain, its business objectives. What I see often in, in, in many of our clients is the, in the beginning is the failure to, to connect cash flow with strategic planning. It all, it's all part and parcel together. You can't do something if you don't have the resources to be able to do it. Cash flow, you know, when you have improved cash flow, you have better banking relationships. Um, increases your, the opportunities for you to, for the organization to be able to do things on a more routine basis. And it also gives you the opportunity to work on, to have money available for special projects. The most important thing about cash flow is you need somebody to manage it. It's a, it's a treasury function. Someone needs to manage the organization's cash flow, and, it, and it's not necessarily the executive director. Or this, it's, it's somebody within probably the accounting department, depending on the size of the organization. It could be the CFO. It could actually be a, you know, a treasurer of an organization. You need a plan. You need a discipline understanding of banking and investment principles and products. Um, the treasury function is more than just uh, paying bills and authorized the release of funds. It's the management of the, of the organization's resource, resources. It's cash. It's, the, it's, the, it's managing accounts payable. It's managing when, or, when, when dollars are invested or not invested. It's managing relationships, vendor relationships. 
it's managing a lot of different functions. It's determining who is going to be paid and when. So the treasury function is not something that uh, should be taken lightly. And in many organizations, the treasury function is really left to a number of different people. There really is no coordinated effort to really focus on different things. And so, uh, you know, one of the takeaways from today is, if, if nothing else, is that the treasury function is a vital part of every operating nonprofit, and every operating business. And so, therefore, it's something that really needs to be communicated. There really needs to be communication between the accounts payable people, accounts receivable department, you know, uh, program people. Everybody needs to understand, you know, what, what role they play in generating, either generating revenues for the organization or in, or in spending those revenues or incurring costs for the organization. So how do you forecast your cash flow? Well, ca cash flow forecasting is really a budget. It's really planning. You know, um, if a, you know, a goal without a plan is only a wish. So you got to plan for things. And if you don't plan for something, it's not going to happen. So you really need to understand what are the cash flow needs. A lot of organizations prepare budgets, but they actually take the budget and prepare a cash flow projection out of that budget. Most organizations don't. They say, well, here's our budget for the year. Well, that's great. If I can, work, I can show a profit on, a, on paper, that's, a great, that's, that's the easy part. But execution is the hard part. Is that, is that budget really going to produce positive cash flow? Or am I going to find myself in a situation where I'm going to need to borrow money? I'm going to need lines of credit? Or am I going to, do I need cap, have capital expenditures? How am I going to pay for those, for pay for things if I don't have a plan in place? And so a, a cash flow budget is very, very important. So you need to understand where your money is coming from and where is it going for. Um, it alerts you to potential rough spots uh, in, you know, during the course of the year. Cash flow planning is really about timing. It's about coordinating uh, billing, collection, and payments. And when you think about it, you, gotta bill for, you have to perform the services, you have to collect for the services, and then you have to pay people for the services. And all that takes time. And unfortunately, nonprofits are, are somewhat different than a lot of other organizations in the fact that probably 70, 80% of your costs have to be paid in advance of when you collect your money. Most of the, because most of the time, you're billing third parties for services. You're not, you're, or you're collecting very, a, very, a small portion, maybe a copay for for some services. But for the most part, you're waiting for your money. So, you know, the, the rule of thumb basically is that you're going you're gonna to spend 70, 80% of, of your total budget for the year or for a month, you're going to spend on things like payroll, payroll taxes, benefits, rents, things that have to be paid within a very, very discrete period of time where other organizations have a lot of other ways of being able to push those costs off. And we'll talk a little bit more about pushing some costs off on another screen. Um, cash flow projections are really educated guesses, you know, they, of when cash is going to come in and when, when it need needs to go out. The best practices in, in, in nonprofit field is the, the nonprofit should have six to 12 months worth of cash reserves or lines of credit available to them. Now think about that. If your operating budget is $10 million, you know, best practices say you should have, ten, you know, six months worth of cash or lines of credit. So it means you need $5 million. I don't know too many organizations that, have, unless they've been around for a long period of time, unless they have, uh, have really focused on cash reserves, have that, that, this kind of metric in place. But that is actually the metric in place that's, that's being quoted these days, six to 12 months of cash reserves or lines of credit to be able to meet 
operating expenses for a nonprofit organization. And given the cutbacks in government funding and cutbacks in donor and, and, and a lot of uh, direct donor gifts, it's, that's understandable that six to 12 months might be, an op you know, be a wonderful metric to be able to obtain. It doesn't happen overnight, but again, what I said earlier, you have to plan for it. And that's what we're, you know, that's what I would encourage people to do. Plan for cash reserves. Plan for have lines of credit in place. And as your bankers will tell you, um, the best time to ask for, to obtain a line of credit is when you don't need it, not when you do need it. Um, so we have cash inflows. Now where does cash come from? So cash comes from cash on hand. You have contributions and grants. And these are the things, that obviously, contributions and grants, so these are the things that are so um, are variables. Um, but a lot, of the, a lot of that, you know, is being cut back because of the uh, government cutbacks. And we see that all the time in a lot in our nonprofit clients. Program fees. Program fees, obviously, you're billing for services. But again, you have to bill for the service, you have to collect, and then you, and in the meantime, you have to pay for people to provide those services. There's affinity programs out there. Um, some organizations are fortunate to be part of. There's uh, investment income, again, depending on the size of the organization. And the investment income used to play a, a larger part uh, in just month-to-month -month cash, flow cash flow projections. But with um, interest rates being what they are today, you know, the investment returns for just working capital cash is really um, almost non-existent. Um, Obviously, you need to do a projection. You need to estimate the timing of cash flow for each, each of these types of uh, sources of cash. Uh, again, there's no magic to it. A lot of it has to, it's trial and error, but over a period of time, you become comfortable with understanding when you can expect to receive certain dollars uh, from various sources. Managing cash outflows. We have to manage the, the, the payment cycle of when we pay people, you know, people say, well, we have to pay everybody within 30 days or 60 days or whatever. Managing cash flow, managing cash outflows is very, very important. And it's, again, it's part of the treasury function. You know, there's, there's really um, three types of, of vendors. You have the non-discretionary types of, ven of vendors payroll, payroll taxes, rents, leases, those are non-discretionary. You have to pay those bills right away. Then you have discretionary uh, services that, that, that you purchase. And you, know, you, you want them, you know, they're, they're, they're your friends, they're the people that you rely on, and you want to make sure they get paid. And then you have the, the what I refer to as the disc discretionary non-urgent. Um, people that you need to pay, but you can put, put them off because they're not as critical to the organization. Somebody needs to determine who's going to pay what expenditure when. Uh, again, that's part of the treasury function. That's part of this whole notion of, of approvals of invoices, processing of invoices, batch processing of invoices, and a coordination between the treasury function and the accounts payable function. Uh, there's you need to identify those vendors that are critical vendors and those vendors that are, are, are strategic and those that are high risk. Strategic vendors are vendors that you want to do business with and need to do business with um, because they're very important to your organization. And they could be, they could be, they could be vendors that uh, you've had long-term relationships with. And so you want to take care of those vendors. You want to make sure they get paid. Uh, high risk vendors are vendors that if you don't pay, they may go out of business, and then you may have a bigger problem. So you need to understand who your vendors are and how far you can push them or put off paying them at, at various 